Welcome, shall we observe the sun? Starting off with the LASCOC2 filter, showing the solar eruptions from the 20th to the 22nd. Here's a look at the solar flare that occurred over the 21st at the 8 o'clock position, which is recorded, as a partial halo, with an angular width of 90 degrees. I'll loop this clip twice. Up next a look at the eruptions, from the 20th, to the 23rd on the LASCOC2, and C3 filters. Using this CME model, the flare from the 21st is mapped, as Mercury, Venus and Earth along with the Stereo A and, SA-10 satellites, get a light dose of solar radiation, and wind. On this model, showing the solar pressure on Earth's magnetosphere, you can see that there is little pressure, occurring today. Here is a model showing the total electron content from the 20th to the 23rd. Ionospheric electron density disturbances that vary the paths of radio signals, leading to difficulties in radio transmissions and errors in the navigation systems that depend on radio signal propagation. As you see, the concentration is mostly at the equatorial area of the Earth, red color coding indicating the higher concentration of electrons. This model is showing the northern and southern poles, aurora forecast from the 21st, to the 23rd. The light green indicates a 10% probability of aurora. On this chart is seen the phases of the Moon, from the 10th to the 31st. Today will be a waning gibbous, the waning gibbous phase is between a half moon and full moon. Waning means it is getting smaller. The Moon displays these eight phases one after the other as it moves through its cycle each month. It takes 27 days for the Moon to orbit Earth. That means the Moon's cycle is 27 days long. Thanks for watching. If you made it this far, give me a thumbs up. And as always, sit back, relax, and let me keep my eye on the sun for you.